The 2017 Volkswagen Golf R you see behind me used to be frame damaged and actually totaled. That's right. It was just a few months ago that the car actually looked like this. Front end damage, rear end damage, and even deployed airbags. Now the question I'm gonna be answering today is can a frame damaged car actually pass state inspection? You see, what happens is when you first buy a totaled salvaged car from an insurance auction like Copart or IAA, they actually send you a title that states salvage but rebuildable. And what that means is it's not actually road legal. You can't take that car out on the road and you are not allowed to put insurance on that car at all. So how exactly do you get it? from a salvage title to a rebuilt title so that you can drive it on the road. Well, I have all the answers right here in this paperwork and I'm gonna explain how I was able to do it with my 2017 salvage Volkswagen Golf R that actually had major framework done to it. Now make sure to watch this video until the end because I know that if you're trying to pass inspection to get a rebuilt title, it sounds confusing and it is very confusing if you go the traditional route of getting your car inspected from the DMV directly and filling out all the paperwork. If you've watched any of the other videos online, it takes a couple weeks of back and forth of them finding mistakes in your paperwork, fix it, telling you to fix it, you fixing it, mailing it back, and back and forth and back and forth. I've actually managed to find a way to get the process ramped up, and I was actually able to get this car passed inspected, passed, and paperwork complete in less than four days. And if you know anybody about that, you'd know that that's near impossible if you go to the DMV. Just getting an inspection to bring the car in takes at least two weeks. And that's not including getting the paperwork filled out. So if you wanna know how I did it, make sure to watch this video until the end because I will be explaining how easy this was to do. Now the first thing I wanna do is actually take you around this car. And for those that watch all the main videos, you'd know that it is now officially rebuilt, but at one point it wasn't. It was actually still salvaged. So I wanna show you that everything is fixed on this car. The front end is fixed. I'll show you around the sides. You can see here, everything looks good. Show you the back. The back is all in one piece. And you can see, oh, if I unlock it, so I got the key, as you can see, the rear end is fully rebuilt and everything is just like a cane factory, even underneath here looks incredible. So this is fully rebuilt, but do you need this to be fully rebuilt in order to pass inspection? These are questions that I'm going to answer in today's video. I also wanna show you the inside of the car so you can see that there are no airbags deployed. The steering wheel airbag is good. The dash airbag is good. All the curtain airbags and seat airbags are intact. So once you believe your car is ready to get inspected, that means it's no longer in your eyes salvage. And it doesn't really matter about paint. I didn't get the car painted. I figured it would be easier to get the car painted after. I could drive it on the road than before and having it towed back and forth. So I brought the car not painted with, you know, just body panels around the car that were unpainted from factory. And that's how I took it to get, you know, inspected. And as you can see, we're, we're good to go. I was able to pass inspection prior. When you're ready to get the car inspected, you need to reach out to the DMV, the central DMV hub, because believe it or not, not all DMVs, this is in Florida, where I got the car inspected, can actually, or are authorized to inspect vehicles for rebuilt titles. What you need to do is call the correct DMV. And for me, because I'm in Florida on the southwest side, not on the east coast in Miami, I needed to call the Palmetto DMV. And I believe there are like only two in Florida. I could be wrong, maybe three. For, uh, North Florida, one on the south, which is Palmetto, the one I went to. And then you have East Coast, which I think might be Miami or somewhere over there. But when you call, she's gonna send you an email, a packet with instructions on how to actually be prepared for the DMV and how it's how to basically show up ready uh, to get the car inspected. And what it says, and there's multiple steps, it goes obtaining a rebuilt title is a two-step process. Obviously the first is the paperwork and the second is the actual inspection. The first thing it says here is a $40 inspection fee, check or money, made payable to the Division of Motor Services or cash. However, they do not recommend mailing cash. So a check written out to them is good. You also 
need the original application for title. So you need to complete, with, please complete the form HSMV 82040 attached, and then you have to send that into them without crossing out anything or white out. Now, things get a bit interesting when filling out that form, because if you are an out of state title, which I was, this car was bought in Georgia and I had it trailered to Florida. So because I had an out of state title, it made the paperwork a bit harder, but I'll answer exactly how you can go around doing that. But now the next thing you need is the original salvage title, which I have. Had, and then you also need the original bill of sale. Now, luckily for me, Copart gives you that bill of sale. And because I paid taxes to Copart, I no longer needed to pay taxes to the DMV. So we can check that off the list. I didn't need to do that either. The next thing you need is a bill of lading, which is needed when purchased from out of state. What that means is if you get the car trailered in from another state, you need to have that receipt, which I also had because I had the trailer company bring the car in. The next thing you need is, and this is basically the most important part of all this information, but if you're going to tackle repairing and rebuilding a car yourself, this is the video you want to make sure to watch because if you don't know any of this stuff, it is going to be astronomically harder to get this car to pass inspection when it comes time to do so. So you wanna make sure you're doing all these things before you purchase that car or while you're building that car. A statement of builder, and this is key, with original parts receipts. And I'll explain more what that means, but you need the title or certificate of destruction for all major components. That is, if I bought a donor car to rebuild this, I would need that, uh, that title for that car as well. You also need to list all the major components on the state statement of builder. And we're going to go in depth more about what that paperwork means in a little bit. Now, the next thing you need is the original repair orders in your in the owner's name. So, let's say I didn't rebuild this car by myself. Some people might go to a shop and get the car rebuilt. Well, you need to save those receipts from them doing that work to the car and have them save all the part numbers and all the VINs from the cars it comes off of. And I'll explain more about that later. But if you do the work yourself, you do not need those original repair orders. If you have someone else do the work, a body shop, an auto mechanic shop, you have them do it, then you need to save that paperwork and send that to them to show proof that this car was rebuilt. So next you need clear photos of the entire vehicle all four exterior sides of the car, and then one of the interior. They wanna see if airbags have been deployed. They wanna see fully around the car, including the roof, to make sure that the damage that they can visually see has been fixed when it comes time to bring this car to get it inspected. And also, the reason they want a list of all the parts you've received, because they're gonna look at the photos you sent, say, oh, there's a fender that's broken. Oh, there's a bumper that's broken. They're gonna look at your parts list and say, did he repair it himself? They basically want a list of every single part, major component that you've replaced. And I'll explain what those major components are in a minute. Now, step two on the rebuilt instruction sheet is actually registering the car to get it physically inspected. And it says upon successful review, they will schedule your vehicle for the next available inspection appointment. Please note the applicant is responsible for obtaining original documents, so on and so forth. And it says, please mail or drop off original application and direct questions uh, uh, to the following, Motorist Services, Bureau of Dealer, blah, 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 blah. It also goes to say, if you choose to use the Palmetto DMV, you mail or drop off your completed rebuilt salvage package to the office. It then says there are now two privatized rebuilt facilities here in Manatee County. If you choose to use them to complete your inspection, once your rebuilt salvage package paperwork is completed, contact them. Now, this is huge, and this is the way you can save weeks, if not months, of stress and pain. Instead of going through the traditional DMV, like most people on YouTube do, what I ended up doing was going to Manatee Rebuilt Inspections, 2909 62nd Avenue East, Bradenton, Florida, 34203. Their website is manatee-rebuilt-inspections.com. I'll link them down in the description below. It was so easy. The only difference is obviously the time savings, but I believe they charged me 140 or 150 bucks instead of $40. The difference is he did all of the paperwork for me. He did everything. He filled out all the paperwork. He filled out every single piece of information to save me the hassle of doing the back and forth with the DMV for weeks. He did it like this and I was able to get it done within two or three days. I sent him the paperwork on Monday. I booked my appointment on Wednesday at like 12 o'clock and by one o'clock I was out the door with a fully rebuilt car which is absolutely 
nuts and all the paperwork in hand. Now, I wanna go over though all the paperwork if you were to go to the DMV or you didn't have a privatized place to go to, I still wanna break down all the paperwork that we had to fill out in detail so that hopefully it helps you if you decide to take on a project like this yourself. Now that we've gone over the list of everything that you need in order to pass inspection, I wanna break down everything step by step. Obviously, as you can see here, you need to have your driver's license as well. And then the first piece of paperwork you need to fill out correctly is called the form HSMV82040 MV. They will provide it in the email that they send you, but I will also link it down in the description of the video if you wanna download it and check it out. I've also found a way to help fill it out as well. Basically what this is, is the application of certificate of motor vehicle. It's basically transferring your title um, from salvage to rebuilt. That is what this piece of paperwork is for. And you basically need to fill out your name, the you know information about the car, how many miles it has, so on and so forth. There was a couple things on this sheet that tricked me up that I got confused with because they don't tell you exactly how to answer it. So that's why using this privatized service, he saved me the hassle of accidentally writing stuff wrong and getting rejected paperwork wise. I didn't know which type of gasoline to choose. It didn't say regular gas. It said natural gas, it said liquid gas, it said all these other things hybrid, so on and so forth. So you're supposed to leave that blank. Well, I actually filled it in because I thought those are the only options. It's probably natural gas. So that's something to keep in mind. After you fill out that paperwork, you then need to have your original certificate of title. You need that. That is the most, probably the most important thing. The next thing you need, and obviously you need to sign it. You need to sign the back of the title to make sure it's going to you. Then you need the original bill of sale. Mine was from Copart, so that worked beautifully, it was perfect. I paid the sales tax on that, so I no longer had to pay that to the DMV. The next thing you need is the bill of lading for shipping. Um, because I had this shipped and trailered from Georgia to Florida, I didn't pick it up myself. I had to submit that paperwork as well, I had it. The more information, the more paperwork you have, obviously the better. This is the most important piece of information as you can see. This is called the statement of builder. And this is where things get a bit tricky, but I'll show you how I filled it out and how he helped me fill it out. And he basically said I did it all correctly here, but he rewrote it and made it better. So simply put, you need to list all the major components you had repaired or replaced and put on the car. Now, things are different. If you have a repair shop or an auto body mechanic, do the work for you. You need to list the parts that they repaired. So if they fixed your bumper, you need to write that they fixed your bumper. Now, if you fixed the bumper yourself, there's no way to write that. So you're gonna leave that blank. As you can see, I listed every single part that I replaced that I had a invoice from. And here's the crazy part, here's the kicker. You can use new parts, obviously. A lot of the parts you can see I have checked off were from the dealer with the invoice. There's no need for a, a VIN on that. But for the parts that I got used from all over the place, major components, which you can see is a list that says for motor vehicles, other than motorcycles, any fender, hood, bumper, cowl assembly, rear quarter panel, trunk lid, door, deck lid, floor pan, engine, frame, transmission, catalytic converter, or airbag needs to be listed down there. Now one would think, oh, well what about steering wheel? Nope, that's not listed. What about headlight? That's a major component. So I thought, nope, it's not listed there, which means don't give it to, the, there's no reason to add it. If the, you know, I had to replace a headlight on here. Well, it doesn't say list the headlight, so I'm not gonna list it, no reason. Now for the parts that I bought used, you can see the rear bumper assembly, the dash, the deck lid. You must list the VIN of the car it came off of. And more importantly, all of these parts, you must have the invoice for. And on the invoice for the used parts, it must have the VIN for the car it came off of. You have an invoice that just says use dashboard, they're gonna reject it, and you're gonna have a, a tough time chasing down VIN numbers. So make sure when you purchase these parts, ask the seller beforehand, even on eBay Motors, ask the seller beforehand to send you a, if they can supply you with a VIN on the invoice of the car it came off of. If they say yes, buy it. If they don't, avoid it at all costs. It goes on even further. If you buy parts off a junkyard, make sure to ask the junkyard to give you the VIN on the invoice of the car you pulled the part off of. It's very important. That's the most important part of this situation. The next thing is uh, signing the applicant, going on even further to list the rest of the part. There's a second part of the statement of builder where you can then write the rest of the parts here. We have uh, the roof airbag, side member, end plate wheel airbag, 
lap free fair bag, so on and so forth. If it was used, as you can see, I listed the part number, the VIN, and I also listed the source if it was new. I bought it from the dealership or I bought it from LKQ, which is another place that I bought all the airbags from, it was a website called LKQ, they were very good, and then so on and so forth. The next thing it says is please continue to describe any repairs made to the vehicle. Now I had asked Palmetto, well, if I fix the bumper myself, how do I write that? Do I need to write that? And she told me this, and this is important, and take note of this if you plan on doing that. This is the work she specifically stated you need to write in order to pass it. Write this specifically. All work and repairs were done by myself. That's what you need to write. And, and the reason is because a lot of cars get salvage titles that really aren't that major. For example, if you have an old super beat up car and it gets sideswiped and you lose a mirror on the car, well, guess what? Insurance is gonna total it out because if the car is only worth 5K and repainting two doors and putting two doors on is, you know, $10,000, they total it out. But really, you don't need to get it painted. It still runs, dries, and the doors open and close, and all it needs is a mirror. You can put the mirror on yourself, and you need a right. Exactly like I said, all work and repairs are done by myself, and that's it. Because a lot of the times, a lot of these cars getting passed through the inspection are not majorly damaged, destroyed, high-end, fancy cars. They're just typical mom and pop, you know, daily driver cars that have minor damage to them. They get a salvage title, not because they're inoperable, but because it's too expensive to replace if you go the traditional route through insurance. So insur insurance just totals it out. A hell damaged car can be driven totally fine, uh, but because of all the damage, it will total out a car that's probably most cars, um, depending on how much, you know, hail damage there is. But again, it's all cosmetic. It doesn't, you know, affect the car at all. So you're right, all work, all repairs were done by myself and you bring it through the inspection. So as you then, I, I went on to say fender was installed by myself. Hood was installed by myself, rear bumper installed by myself, and I listed those parts and I wrote headlight was replaced and taillight was replaced. Basically, the parts you can see on the outside is what they want. They wanna see who did the work and they mainly wanna know where you got your used parts from. That's literally the whole point. They don't really care how the car was rebuilt. I'll, I'll tell you, they don't really care how the car was rebuilt. They care more is about if the parts were stolen uh, and where you got them from. Did you steal them off? you know, a car sitting in the parking lot. Did you steal them or buy them stolen? They, so they're checking the VIN numbers to make sure that the VIN numbers are not from stolen cars. That's the main focal point of this because at the end of the day, they can only see what's on the outside and they can only see what's on the dashboard. They don't know if you changed your airbag out and so on and so forth here. And I'll get more into that when the time comes. So once I got my appointment in place at Manatee Rebuilt Inspections, emailed me a copy uh, he emailed me this this thing here, which you need to bring in to the DMV. And this is called, uh, it basically says right here, to County Tax Collector, Manatee Rebuilt Inspection. They authorized me a temporary tag rebuilt for 10 days. And it says, this is granted permission to obtain a temporary tag for the vehicle and individual described below. Um, the office does not verified insurance requirements, so on and so forth. So they stamp it, you get the seal of approval, you bring this to the DMV. You also need to take out insurance. Uh, this is my first time having insurance in Florida. So I simply called Geico, said, hey, I need, I'm debating on buying a car. I need to get insurance on it beforehand so I can drive it. They said, okay, what's the VIN? They don't look up. Geico does not care if you have a rebuilt car, which is super cool. Certain private insurance companies care what, what car you have. Geico does not give a shit. And they don't even check. They never asked. The question never came up. Is it rebuilt? So on and so forth. Believe it or not, they actually insured a salvage car for about two days, three days before I had it, uh, before I brought it down, believe it or not. So they don't check. Basically, you, they ask you for the VIN number. They ask you what insurance you want. They're salespeople. They sign you up. You get it insured. And then you have insurance. So once I had my insurance, I printed that out. And I, br and I brought that piece of paper, the stamped piece of paper or the email to the DMV. And I brought my insurance. And um, that was it. Once they saw that, it cost me $5 to get the temp tag. I have a receipt, the $5 receipt from, and I went to a private DMV uh, tax collector's office, which I also highly recommend. I avoided the DMV entirely. I avoided the DMV, my local one in Fort Myers, and I entirely avoided the DMV in Palmetto because as you know, it's a pain in the butt and it takes hours of waiting. So I went to a private, third party private DMV. What I went to is called First Tag, Lee, uh, First Lee Tag Agency. So if you're local to Fort Myers, you go there. Otherwise, just look up a privatized DMV, and they can do this paperwork for you. And it's 
they don't charge you anything and it's quick and it's easy and I was in and out within 20 minutes which is awesome. Once they saw my insurance and once they saw that they emailed me a, or sorry they printed out a 10 day temp tag which is awesome just like this and when that came I put that on the car and now I was able to drive the car anywhere. It was the first time as you saw in the video I was able to drive the car around the block legally which is awesome i had the car in short i had it registered and i had it inspected temporarily of course what's cool is after that i then had to bring the car with this temp tag to manatee rebuilt inspections to get the car inspected now that was an interesting process because it was the first time driving the car over an hour away but it was all good and i highly recommend them i brought the car there we went over my paperwork in depth he looked over everything. He made sure to check everything. I had to bring all this paperwork. Actually, I emailed it to him beforehand so it was easier for him to fill out. Um, I also emailed him the photos of the car, clear colored photos so he could check it all. Um, and any paperwork he needed, he sent to me and we were able to do that, bada bing, bada boom, the paperwork that we went over. I brought the car to him. He looked over the entire car. He checked everything. He opened or he started the car, looked at the dash, made sure everything was good. It was that simple. Once he saw that everything was good and he checked the lights, blah, 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 looked inside the car, looked at the front. He said, okay, you're good. He puts a sticker on the car and then he hands you all your paperwork that you had filled out with him. He puts it in a sealed envelope. You bring that sealed envelope to the private DMV or to the DMV and they will then look it over. You pay your registration taxes, which was like $500 to register the car. And then they give you a license plate right then and there and you are good to go and the insurance will update and you are good to go it was that simple and that's pretty much it it was easy as that they kind of he kind of looked around the car for 30 seconds went in the inside turned the car on checked the mileage to make sure the mileage was accurate checked the vin to make sure the vin matched and it was done like that easy peasy lemon squeezy there was no catches there was no hiccups it was that simple um and that's a thing um a lot of people are worried about how this car looks at the end of the day how the heck are they going to inspect the car you know if they have a line of people there's no way they can possibly check every single thing uh obviously the dash is going to show an airbag light you know but if you they can't tell if i put an airbag actually in here obviously i did but if you just put a paper clip in between and you know completed the the wiring harness for the airbag and you never had airbags in this car as long as the lights off they'll never know so you got to think about that when you're buying salvage cars but at the end of the day they can't physically inspect every single thing on this car. He didn't even look at the frame that was that we had, you know, professionally repaired, but he didn't even look at it because he can't. What's he going to do? We'd have to take off the bumper. We'd have to take out all the interior trim and all the interior panels. We'd have to take all the wheels off and they don't have time for that. They can't. They just no time. So they'll physically look around. They'll poke around. He'll look around here. He looked on the inside and he said, good to go. Also, something that I forgot to mention, not only did I get the license plate the same day, I also got the Florida rebuilt title the same exact day. So I walked in and out of the private firstly tag agency with both my title and with my registration and with a license plate. So now you might be wondering what makes this car uh, rebuilt? What distinguishes this besides the title that makes this car rebuilt? Well, in Florida, the only thing they do that makes this car, like I said before, a rebuilt title. The only way you can tell is if you open the driver's door, you can see down here in the corner, they'll put a tag right in the corner that states that this car was officially rebuilt and it passed inspection and that's it. It's literally the only way to tell that a Florida car is officially rebuilt. But that's pretty much it for today's video. If you're liking this tile content and you wanna see more or you have any questions about the rebuilt title process, let me know down in the comments below. Otherwise, make sure to smash the like button, turn on post notifications, subscribe, and I'll see you in tomorrow's video. Peace.